What a week it's been for race grifters. These are the people who latch on to any news topic and make it about racism. They can then get attention and money from white people who are desperate to absolve themselves of this manufactured guilt. This week, the Women's World Cup team came under fire for being too white. The Edinburgh Fringe was accused of racism. And in the most tasteless race grifting since 1930s Germany, Dr. Shola Moss Shogbamimu somehow managed to make the horrific Lucy Letby case about race. She said, Lucy Letby ex exemplifies how ideology of whiteness keeps Britain in a chokehold. They believed her tears, denials, even though evidence said otherwise, for no other reason than she's white. A black or brown nurse would have been reported to the police immediately and sacked for suspicion. Really? If there is a systemic bias in the British public sector, there's evidence that it tilts away from white people. In May, Glasgow City Council posted a job ad explicitly aimed at those quote, who identify as black, Asian or minority ethnic. London's mayor, Sadiq Khan, has said that white people aren't real Londoners and the RAF were forced to apologise for discriminating against what their recruiter described as useless white men. Ever since the McPherson report introduced the spectre of institutional racism as the number one menace two decades ago, the paramount aim of everybody in the public sector has been to look as non-racist as possible. What should be a noble aim, of course people shouldn't be racist, has had terrible consequences. Grooming gang whistleblowers were demoted, sacked or sent on diversity training because their bosses were so afraid of being accused of racism if they tackled the issue. But facts don't matter when there's money to be made by grifters such as Dr Shola filtering every event through the poisonous prism of critical race theory that says that all white people are inherently racist. You'd think she'd maybe take a day off when we're talking about the most abhorrent serial killer in contemporary history. But this, actually, this is perfect for Dr Shola. The more disgusted people are by her, the more outrage flows in her direction, the more she can hold it up and say, look at this horrific racism directed at me. And she gets attention, she gets speaking engagements, she gets appearances on Jeremy Vine and Good Morning Britain, and she gets book sales, tithes paid to the high priestess of racism to atone for the ever-present sin of white. It's not a new thing. In medieval times, holy men raised huge sums of money by selling indulgences, which purified souls of their sins. The church had a complex system to calculate exactly how much less punishment you'd get in the afterlife for purchasing an indulgence. Sort of like a carbon offset scheme for morality. And the money they made was astronomical. Selling indulgences paid for the construction of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. We do the exact same thing now, but our society's original sin is whiteness, and the indulgences are purchased through diversity training by racial awareness coaches, donations to Black Lives Matter, and talks by Dr. Shola. It's a huge industry. According to The Economist, between May and December 2020, donations to Black Lives Matter related causes amounted to $10.6 billion. That's billion, not million. There's a lot of controversy around how much of this actually goes to helping people and how much goes to ensuring a luxurious life for these modern day televangelists. Patrice Coulours, the founder of BLM, siphoned off millions of dollars to buy luxury properties. But it doesn't matter. The money's not to do good, the money's to absolve guilt. According to her agent's website, Dr Shola commands fees of five to ten thousand pounds per appearance. They handily remind any corporate bookers of key dates when they need to buy their indulgences. Race Equality Week, the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination and Black History Month. How ironic that Dr Shola makes money from perpetuating racial animosity in the name of eliminating it.